Hey guys and welcome back to Angel Education YouTube channel. In today's video we're very fortunate to have Dr. Hoisler as our guest and we're here talking about ancient history. So if you're applying for ancient history as your undergraduate degree either at uh, Oxbridge or another great uh, UK university definitely keep watching this because Dr. Hoisler is going to be sharing his tips and experiences in how to strengthen your application. Great, Dr. Hoisler, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. It's a pleasure. Yes, thank you. Uh, Dr. Hoisler, first of all, can you tell us a bit more about your background specifically to do with ancient history? Where did your interest come and, 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 and what have you done in your career to develop yeah. that? Uh, well, I think my interest started at, at school in a way with ancient history. Well, ancient history wasn't really taught very much, but it was always fascinating in the ancient worlds. And therefore, I started to study ancient history, but combined with archaeology. I like to, to be interdisciplinary in a way. Um, and then I moved to UCL a long time ago, did my MA there, my PhD. Um, and I very much I focus very much on cultural interactions. Mm -hmm. That's really my what I'm interested in, you know, like with the Roman Empire, what happens to all these native indigenous people? How do they feel? How do they experience Roman imperialism? How does this affect us? culture, society, religion. So that's my speciality. And I look at all possible aspects of like historical questions, sources, uh, including archaeological sources. Inscriptions are very important. So I worked at uh, Oxford University for some time, working on the Roman inscriptions of Britain. Um, among others, I was in France as well, working on the Romanization of the south of France, of south of Gaul. Uh, I, I also worked uh, I was also in Italy for, for several terms, doing research there, been in Germany, been in Wales, and uh, yes, I'm still in Wales at the moment. Um, no. But Correct. mainly focusing on Roman history, I must confess, yes. Okay. And uh, Dr. Hoisler, so why, um, why would someone want to apply to Asian history? I mean, what other jobs can you do apart from being an Asian history, you know, academic or are, are there careers outside of academia available to, to students studying the subject? Oh yeah, but I think certainly ancient history gives you a lot of employability skills, lots of tools, um, which are very much appreciated in many, many of us uh, professional jobs afterwards. So I think many of the students I have taught have gone in all possible careers. So some of them have become teachers, uh, quite a few of them actually. Uh, but I've got uh, people working all possible as, uh, aspects, like one is working for the CID because she's f focusing, well, she was working on like grime in the ancient world, now she's working on grime in the modern world. So uh, others are working in, I don't know, all possible jobs across Britain and beyond, really. Wow. I'm just going to think about some. <laughs> and, 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 and you yeah, can't remember. <laughs> yes. And you, of course, worked at Oxford at UCL in, in Germany, in France, and you know, in Wales. So, what would you say in ancient history stu your students have struggled with the most? Are there any particular aspects of the subject that that is most challenging? Uh, it's not a subject. I think it's it's uh, the subjects are not challenging as, as so well. They're, they're all kind of challenging and interesting. So you obviously have to engage. You have to do a lot of reading. Uh, you have to also. I think this is what is a challenge. You know, it's always new and different and you always have to question everything. That's the important thing about like, a subject like ancient history. Just don't believe anything written. Uh, so whether it's a modern work of the past 20 years or 100 years, uh, or it's an ancient work if you read your Livy or Aristotle or Her Herodotus. Uh, so just don't believe anything they're saying. Always look for proof. So that's something which when students find very difficult, you know, what is actually there? How can I prove that this author is right or wrong? Oh, or how can I rethink uh, what a famous scholar has said? So people just go and say, oh, it's, it's in this book, it must be right. But you go like, no, actually, think about it. What is the evidence? And that's what people are struggling with. But that's the important thing you learn in your undergraduate career, how to be very analytical, how to write uh, a good essay, for example, and how really to kind of put your argument in the right order to really make a good argument, you know, show your proof, show the evidence, discuss it in a very critical mm -hmm. manner. And this is what is so appreciated then later by employers. That's because you can do really critical thinking and having a different view on things. 
you know, I was, I was talking just the other day to one of our NJ, uh, NJ alumni who is now working and uh, she studied the humanities subject, not, uh, not ancient history, a uh, different subject. She just studied history, I believe. And she said that that training to question everything and she used uh, a word perhaps I shouldn't use on this uh, YouTube channel, but to kind of call, you know, to mistrust, but the default mistrust the sources that she's seeing and to question it really, really helped her in, in her current career because she, she could spot mistakes where other people are just coasting she thought okay this doesn't seem right let me investigate you know let me just take an extra half a day to investigate this and those are really useful skills that many employers many companies value yeah companies and also like also in civic administration you know your local county council or so it's also because you see different things and you see mistakes before they are happening so it's, it's very good i think you you have a certain skill so i, th I think Yes, as I said, don't trust any source, ancient or modern, or, or what you see on TV or on Wikipedia or uh, yeah. <laughs> newspapers. So I think that's a very important skill that you see. <laughs> you know, you see why somebody's arguing in a particular way. You see what is wrong with statistics. So also in ancient history, you obviously also work with statistics in certain fields. Mm. Like if you think of demography, for example, in the Roman Empire or in, in the Greek world or in Roman Egypt, Hellenistic Egypt. You think of so many statistical forms. I mean, it really introduces you to such a wide range of expertise and tools and all those things. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, talking about the ancient world, it also reflects our own modern world. Yeah. That's always very important. So you really learn something which is relevant for today. No, no, that makes sense. And uh, Dr. Hoysler, just in the last couple of minutes of this video, so if you want to apply for ancient history, what are kind of your top three tips? That you will give just maybe a one sentence uh, on each tip to to strengthen your application uh, it's difficult to, uh, no, I, don't, I don't have three tips ready unfortunately <laughs> yes uh, i'm not prepared for this uh, so but we have to think about well i think you obviously want to show your enthusiasm for the subject so engage with things do as much reading as you can before so if you write a cv personal statement for your application you want them to say, you want to be very precise, oh, I've done all those things already before. Uh, so you can spice it up a little bit, but think about, oh, I've, I've done this kind of field work, I've done this reading, I've been in this society or club, I've been engaging with this. At the moment with COVID-19, you know, I've been listening to these uh, online lectures. So many events nowadays are yeah. available online on YouTube uh, or on Zoom. And, and therefore, it's like they are available to everybody, mm. so you don't have to go to Oxford or London to actually listen to to one of those uh, public lectures. Yeah. Where you can just go wherever you want to go and just join. Uh, so I think you really should go and show your engagement with the subject that you're enjoying it. So you're not just doing it out of well, I don't know anything better to do, but really show that hey, I'm really engaging. I'm investing time yeah. in this effort. I've, I've got all these books. I don't believe in any aliens or so uh, building pyramids. I really believe in, you know, I want to know more about those ancient societies. No. So think about what you can say in terms of be precise, what you have done, what societies you've done, what activities you've mm. done. Um, Perhaps I can jump in here. So if, if I can almost paraphrase what you're saying is demonstrate, don't, don't talk about your interest, demonstrate it through the activities you've done, whether reading, activities, societies, uh, events. Uh, and then two more from me guys the single biggest thing you can do to give yourself an advantage a fair advantage is to start planning early so if you understand the timeline which is for oxford and cambridge you need to apply by 15th of october of the year before you want to start university for every other uk university it's 15th of january and you start two years before that and start thinking about your personal statement start developing a relationship with your teacher who's going to write you the ucas reference start maybe visiting uh, universities where you want to apply to not necessarily in person, even on Zoom now, after this year, every university does a virtual open day, which are not as good, but almost as good. So start planning early. And the third tip is be disciplined. You know, that's that's the biggest thing that, the biggest common denominator that students who really succeed, who we work with have, is um, they create a plan. They incorporate breaks and leisure time and time off into that plan, that's very important, but then stick with it and, and really be disciplined and, you know, if you expect to get to a good university and maintain your sleep and social life and good academic performance, it's unlikely to happen. So something has to go. Probably your, you know, some elements of your social life you have to sacrifice for a couple of years, but it will pay off in the end because you're going to have an offer from a great uni. So 
those probably combined Dr. Hoysler and Sunny tips. Number one, <coughs> demonstrate your, your interest and talk about it. Number two, start planning early. And number three, be disciplined. Um, discipline is probably the most difficult one for most people, not yeah. just students, yes, but no, no, adults, no, exactly. <laughs> think of your essay writing skills because obviously, like if you apply for Oxford, Cambridge, and also for some other places, you might have to hand in an essay or so. Mm. So think about very early, oh, this is an essay where I really want to invest time because that's something which I want to send in with my application for Oxford, for example. No. No, that's right. That's an important skill. Even if nowadays at university, you know, assessment is so much wider mm. in, in what we do nowadays, from video documentaries to posters to exhibitions and, and uh, all possible things you do nowadays at university, yeah. at most universities. Um, but I, th I think, yes, the essay writing skill is still essential. So get help if you are unsure about how to write a good essay. Also, punctuation and spelling is not difficult, but if you if you're struggling with this just get help and advice because it's actually quite straightforward yeah and guys like if you if you don't have someone who can help you you know even you, things like grammarly right grammarly.com which has a free uh, a free version it's not the full version but you know put your text through that see the mistakes and the way to learn how to write better is to read great writers and just copy them you know no one's asking you to reinvent the wheel just copy what others have successfully been doing for decades before you and, and and that will be fine that's what i do i'm just stealing all the best writing tricks and techniques that i can pick up from the books i read and um and that that works just fine as long as you don't play too much exactly exactly <laughs> thank you dr Hoysler. thank you so much for joining us today oh, thank you thank you thank you good luck guys and um don't forget if you have any questions feel free to message me on instagram or twitter or in the comments here below do subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video because we're doing regular videos like this and all the best in your application